So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give a little bit of a tutorial of how to use the TI-84 plus CE uh, to make compound interest calculations. So where that is actually located in that calculator. And then we're going to go through four different examples of how to make that calculation. So first of all, um, let's look at where it's actually located in this calculator. So if we go to the uh, app section of it, what we'll find the app section is a finance section. So if we hit enter onto that, you will have this TMV solver that you can hit enter onto. And this is actually where your compound interest section of that calculator is. And you'll notice that we have all these different sections here. So the N, the I, the PV, PMT, FE, P slash Y and the C slash Y. So all these things represent something different. Now I'm first of all gonna quickly go through what each of these represent because that's something that's really, really important to understand. So first of all, this N here, uh, I was gonna draw a little arrow, but that's not probably gonna work well. Uh, but this N here, what that actually represents is the total number of compounding periods. So total number of compounding periods. The I percentage is the uh, interest rate. Now this interest rate is used as a percentage. So as a percentage. That's saying it's really, really important. So when you're dealing at like using the interest rate in a formula, you would actually convert that to as a decimal where in the calculator itself, you'll leave it as a percentage. The uh, PV is the present value. The PMT is the payments per term. which in these particular questions, we're not gonna be worrying about the payments per term, but in future videos, this will become really, really important. I'll discuss that then. The FV is the future value. The uh, PY is the payments per year. Now, once again, this is gonna be something that we're not gonna focus on in this particular video, uh, but it's gonna become really, really important in future videos. And the C slash Y is the compounding periods per, or how many times it compounds per year. So that's something that is gonna be really important in this video, but also in future videos as well. So what we're gonna do is I guess go through several examples of questions about how we actually um, use this calculator here to be able to answer these questions. Now, something that's really, really important here is what I've got listed just here is really your working out that you're gonna be using any time that you use your graphics calculator. So if you're using graphics calculator to answer a question, and some questions uh, will require to use the formula, but a lot you'll be using this calculator. This is actually how you show your working out. You're showing what you're putting into your calculator to get your answer. So in this question, we've got Sophie has decided to invest $15,000 into an account that pays 3.15% per annum, compounding monthly. We want to know what the balance she is expecting to have after five years is. With all these questions, I recommend that we actually go and work out um, what information we have in here and which one of these we're actually trying to find. So if we start working our way through, N is the total number of compounding periods that we're looking for. So it's really important, it's not just time, it's the total number of compounding periods, but it does relate to time. So what balance will she expect to have after five years? Well, the total number of compounding periods is gonna be our five years multiplied by however many um, times it's gonna compound per year. And we can actually enter this into our calculator exactly like this, so we can write it down like this as well. So because it's compounding monthly here, um, it's gonna have five lots of 12 times it compounds, and that will give us the total number of times it's gonna compound for um, the total investment. The interest rate as a percentage, we can see here that the interest rate is 3.15%. 
Uh, so we can write that down as percent. At uh, the present value, uh, we're deciding to invest $15,000 into this account. Now this is something that's really, really important. The present value has a positive and a negative that you need to be aware of. Now I like to think about it any time that you're putting money into the bank, it's going to be a negative value. Anytime you're pulling money out of the bank or you're getting money from the bank, it's going to be a positive value. So in this case, because we're investing $15,000 at the start of the loan, you're actually putting that money into the bank. So this present value is actually a negative and it's gonna be negative 15,000. And then the PMT is how much you're actually paying the bank per term. So every time you, sometimes you can make payments every single time. Um, we're not making any payments here, so this is just going to be zero. Uh, the future value is going to be, um, you know, how much you're expecting to have at the end. Uh, this one, we're actually after that, that's what we're calculating. So I leave that as a question mark just to indicate that's what we're calculating. The payments per year, that relates to the payments per term. So this is how many times you're gonna put money into the account um, or into the bank each time. We're not making any payments here, um, but I do tend to leave that when we're not making payments. I tend to leave that as the same as how often it's compounding per year. And because it's compounding monthly, it means it's gonna compound 12 times per year, which answers this one here. So I tend to leave this the same as this, um, whenever our payments is zero, just because that doesn't really matter then. So what we're gonna do with our calculator is in this section here, um, we're just gonna type in the information that we have. So this is gonna be five times 12, uh, which will give us 60. Uh, it's gonna be an interest rate of 3.15%. Uh, it's gonna have a present value of negative 15,000. Uh, the PMT was zero. The future value, we can skip this. I mean, some people like to clear it if that's what they're calculating, but we can just skip it. And then the PY is gonna be 12 and that'll automatically change our CY for us. And when, what we do with this calculator is we come back to the highlight the future value because that's what we're actually after here. And we go to the alpha because that um, highlights anything that's green on our calculator. And we can see down by the end to here that we've got this solve. So if we hit the alpha and then solve, it'll actually give us the future value up here of what we're trying to find. So the future value here, therefore the future value is gonna be approximately, and it's a dollar value here, so $17,000, uh, well 17,555 dollars and approximately nine cents. Okay, so that's essentially how we actually go and calculate that. Now what's really neat here is we can actually calculate any one of these. So we can go and calculate the um, total number of compounding periods, the interest rate, the present value, the payments per term, the future value, the compounding per year, or the compounding, uh, so the payments per year and the compounds per year. We can actually go and calculate any one of these depending on what the question itself is after. So we'll go through three more examples of this where I can show you that we can calculate other values, not just the future value here. So let's look at this one. Matthew is investing money into an account paying 3.75% per annum, uh, compounding half yearly. He aims to have a total of $10,000 at the end of six years. How much will he need to deposit to achieve his goal? So like I said, my strategy here is just to go through this one by one and work out what information you have and work out what you're needing to actually calculate here. So the end is total number of compounding, uh, times it compounds, total number of times it compounds. So do we have time? Uh, so hang on, he's investing money 3.5, compounding half yearly. So it is half yearly, so that's gonna be compounding twice per year. Uh, and he's investing for six years, so it's gonna be six times two here. The interest rate, uh, we do have that is 3.75%. Uh, the present value, uh, keep in mind this is giving money to the bank. Um, so at this point, it's gonna be a negative. So the present value, uh, we have, he aims to have a total of $10,000. How much will he need to deposit? Okay, so the present value we actually don't know here because that's what we're trying to find. The PMT just at the moment is zero. The future value, now this is really, really important. So at the end, you're gonna be taking the money from the bank. So you're not giving it to the bank, so it's not negative anymore. Bring it from the bank, so it's gonna be a positive $10,000. 
And then the PY is um, how much it's paying. We're paying per year. I keep that as the compounding per year while it's um, while, while we're not making any payments. That will make sense more um, in future videos um, when PY is going to be different. So because it's compounding half yearly, it's going to compound a total of twice per year, and I keep that the same. So now we go to the calculator here and we just put these values in. Uh, so six times two. Uh, 3.75, uh, we don't know that one, keep that one at zero, this is positive $10,000. And that's probably the biggest thing when you're doing this with the calculator, is making sure that you get your negatives correct um, when you're entering your present value and your future value. So particularly when we start dealing with not just investments, but loans. So we can't always say that the present value is always going to be negative and the future value is always going to be positive because that will actually change when you're um, dealing with investments versus when you're dealing with loans. So it's really important to get in that mindset of when you're giving the bank money, uh, it's going to be a negative, And when you're getting money back from the bank, it's going to be a positive. So we can see here that our present value um, is approximately equal to uh, it's negative 8,000 and $1 and 82 cents. What's interesting here is we would actually have to round this value up no matter what here, because we would need, we're actually after how much we need to deposit to achieve this goal. And because this is, um, like if we rounded it down to 81 cents, we wouldn't actually quite achieve our goal. I mean, yes, we'd only be a few cents off in this situation, but we wouldn't get exactly $10,000 at the end of six years. We have to actually at least put um, 81 and a half cents or 82 cents in there to achieve that. So um, whenever you end up with a negative for the present value, I generally say that we need to interpret what that means. So I put a sentence here afterwards, unlike the previous question, where therefore Matthew, needs to deposit approx $8,001.82. Okay, so whenever you end up with a negative in your answer, I tend to interpret that to make sure that we're um, interpreting what that negative actually means. Okay, so let's have a look at two more questions. Um, basically, the, it's the same process that we're going to go through. So for how long must Sam invest $10,000 at 3.6% per annum, compounding quarterly for it to amount to $12,000? For how long? That tells us right now we don't have um, the total amount of time, um, which means that we can't get the total amount of times it compounds from the start. So we're actually dealing with N here. Um, the I percentage, that's going to be the interest rate, so that's 3.6%. The present value, uh, we presently have $10,000. Now we're putting that into the um, bank, so that's going to be negative $10,000. Uh, PMT, we're not dealing with just the minutes, so that's zero. Uh, the future value, we're after $12,000. Now we're pulling that from the bank at that time, so it's going to be positive $12,000. PY, uh, we're compounding quarterly, so I'm going to keep that at four because it's going to compound four times per year. Uh, so that way we're keeping that the same. So you can see here we can quickly fill out the information and instantly we know that we're finding N. So we go to our calculator here and we put this information in. So 3.6%, negative 10,000, uh, PMT is zero, uh, future value is 12,000. Uh, PY and CY will keep as four. Go and calculate our N. Now what's really important about N here, whoops, what did I just do? Um, hang on. Alpha solve, I'm hitting second <laughs> by mistake there. So what's really important here is when we get the N value, so this N here is going to be approximately uh, 20.35, so 20.35. This isn't just years, it's actually going to be how many times it's total, like total times it's compounded. So this time it's compounded a total times of, it's in quarterly, so this is actually in quarters here. So it's 20.35 quarters approximately. 
Now, of course, if you needed to um, interpret this and get this into years or something like that, because that's what the question asked for, this question didn't. But if that's what the question asked for, you would need to convert quarters into years. So you'd need to divide this by four um, to get it back to years or whatever you need to get it to. So that's something that's really important to note with N. Okay, so one more example here. Uh, Chelsea deposits six thousand dollars into an account that compounds um, that compounds interest fortnightly. Two and, uh, two and a half years later, the account had a balance of this. Um, what annual rate is paid? So you can see here that we're after the interest rate now as a percentage. The total number it's going to compound is going to be two and a half years is the amount of years that we're dealing with multiplied by how many times it's compounding per year, which is fortnightly. So that's going to be 26 times per year. So you can really see that knowing, um, you know, how many times fortnightly, how many fortnights there are in a year, how many weeks there are in a year, months in a year is going to be really important for this. Um, the present value here um, is how much you're starting with. So you're depositing 6,000 that's going into the bank. So that has to be a negative. The PMT, we're not dealing with yet. Uh, future value, uh, we have 6,434.81. And that's going to be positive because you're pulling that out of the account at that time. Uh, the PY, uh, we're just leaving it the same as the CY. So the CY is going to be fortnightly. So that's 26 for both of these. So now we're just getting the interest rate. And we just follow the same process, except we're going to do this now for the interest rate. So this is going to be two and a half times 26 uh, interest rate. That's what we're finding. So negative 6,000 for our present value. PMT, we're leaving at zero. 6,434.81. PY 26, CY 26. And we go back and go alpha solve to get the interest rate. Wow, that's a very high interest rate. Let me just check that I put everything in correctly. 2.5 by 26, 65. I have a feeling that one's the one I just put in wrong. Yes, that would be right. So the interest rate is going to be approximately 2.8%. All right. Sometimes when you get something that's really out there like that, when you're putting into your calculator, um, just double check everything that you put into your calculator and make sure that you got everything um, into the calculator correctly. But that's how we use our calculator, um, like the TI-84 plus CE, to be able to answer um, compound interest related questions. Mm -hmm.